flowchart and paragraph proof. Our objectives are to write flowchart and paragraph proofs, as well as prove geometric theorems by using deductive reasoning. Why learn this? Flowcharts make it easy to see how the steps of a process are linked together. Think of it like your peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You want to make sure that everything flows in the correct order so that that way, when you're done, you actually have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Now, a flowchart proof uses boxes and arrows. You should try to make sure that your arrows go from top left to bottom right in some way, shape, or form. You don't want things going up and down and left and right all at the same time. It makes it really hard to follow. Well, let's look at a theorem. The Common Segments Theorem. Given collinear points A, B, C, and D arranged as shown, if segment AB is congruent to segment CD, then AC will be congruent to BD. Let's look at a proof for the Common Segments Theorem. Use the given flowchart proof to write a two-column proof. I'm going to shrink this up a little bit just so that that way we can have some space to actually write this two-column proof. But I wanted you to see some of the different pieces in a much clearer format. All right, so we have ourselves a two-column proof, which means we need our statements. and our reasons. When you're reading a flowchart proof, you should try to follow where the arrows are going. So for example, there are no arrows going to this given over here, and it's at the top left. So that's what you would start with. So you have A, B, is congruent to CD, and that would be given. Now, we wouldn't go and take this reflexive property yet because our given gives us a direct piece of information. Notice this arrow. So we have step two. AB equals CD. And the reason we're allowed to state that is the definition of congruent segments. When we look at our flowchart proof, we can't go to the direct right and put in a plus AB plus BC equals BC plus CD because we need one more piece of information before we can state that. So that's when we would put in our reflexive property. So now we'll add in BC equals BC and that is our reflexive property. Now we can state our AB plus BC equals BC plus CD, and we know that based on the addition property of equality. All right, well, similar to what was happening here, we needed to state what was on top before we stated what was on bottom here. So we want to add in the segment addition postulate before we stick in our substitution. Now, when you're doing this kind of a proof, notice how you wouldn't necessarily put in the substitution unless you had pieces that you could substitute with. So that's why your substitution needs to come later in the proof. So now if we use our substitution, now we can get that AC equals BD.
And once we have that, we can finish it up with the fact that if AC equals BD, then AC must be congruent to BD through the definition of congruent segments. Now that you know how to read a flowchart proof and make it into a two-column proof, let's flip it. Let's look at a two-column proof and try to write a flowchart proof. Remember, you want to go from the top left to the bottom right in some way, shape, or form. And you want to make sure your arrows are only going to the things that are directly, directly related to it. So, let's start with our given. We have angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. Alright, and now we have this angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary and angle 3 and angle 4 are supplementary. The given didn't provide us with this information, so it's separate. So make sure there is no there are no error arrows, not errors, going to this next piece. We put it in our box. And the reason is the linear pair theorem. Okay, once again, no arrows are going between these two. All right, so now we can go to our next step. We have angle one is congruent to angle three. Well, what gave us the ability to state this? We combine the use of the given and the fact that these angles are supplementary to enable us to state that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 through the congruent supplements theorem. That being said, you need to make sure you have arrows coming from both of those pieces because both of them make up this statement. And now we have our last statement. The measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 3. And we know that based on the definition of congruent angles. And the only thing that led us to be able, being able to state that was our previous statement. Let's look at paragraph proof. A paragraph proof is a style of proof that presents the steps of the proof and their matching reasons as sentences in a paragraph. All right, so we have two theorems here. The vertical angles theorem means that you have vertical angles are congruent. And the other one doesn't have a name, but if two congruent angles are supplementary, then each angle is a right angle. So let's first look at reading a paragraph proof. Use the given paragraph proof to write a two-column proof of the vertical angles theorem. So given angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles, we want to prove that vertical angles are congruent. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. So using our paragraph proof, we can create a two-column proof. So we have our statements. and our reasons. To save time, I'm going to have you guys try some of this on your own, and I'll show you pieces as we go through, almost as hints. So we start with angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles because it's given and based on the definition of vertical angles angle 1 and angle 3 are formed by intersecting lines. Okay, so now we can look at angle 1 and angle 2 are a linear pair and angle 2 and angle 3 are a linear pair based on the definition of a linear pair and then we can move on to looking at, okay, well, angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary, and angle 2 and angle 3 are supplementary because of the linear pair theorem. 
Finally, we can wrap it up with step 5. And that would be our last piece. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, and we merely used the congruent supplements theorem. Alright, well let's try actually writing a paragraph proof now. So you're going to basically make a sentence for each of these pieces. So, for example, it is given that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. And then by the vertical angles theorem, Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. Well, now we're on step 3, essentially. So we've got, by the transitive property, so by the transitive property, of congruence, Angle 2 is congruent to angle 4, and similarly, since it's the same property, I mean, you could write again also by the transitive property. Angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. And that concludes our lesson on flowchart and paragraph proof.